Welcome to COVID-19, What Pharmacists Know Now. In this presentation, we're going to discuss the question, should patients discontinue their ACE inhibitors and ARBs? This question has come up multiple times in both the mainstream news and on social media. My name is Arden Berry, and I am a registered pharmacist in British Columbia. My current position is as a clinical pharmacy and research specialist with Fraser Health and assistant professor partner at the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences at the University of British Columbia. I provide care to patients at the primary care clinic at the Chilliwack General Hospital and heart function clinic at the Abbotsford Regional Hospital. This presentation is brought to you by the Canadian Society of Hospital Pharmacists, British Columbia branch. So what is COVID-19? Though I'm mo sure most people are aware, COVID-19 is a viral infection caused by a novel coronavirus or the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The name COVID-19 means coronavirus disease identified in 2019. My disclaimer is that the COVID-19 pandemic is rapidly evolving and new information is emerging on a daily basis. In fact, I received an email from a colleague of mine at St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver, literally minutes before starting this presentation. I am currently recording this video on the morning of Wednesday, March 25th, 2020, and it is based on the best evidence that is available to me at this time. As of yesterday, there are 617 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in British Columbia, as per the BC Centre for Disease Control. And what are ACE inhibitors and ARBs? Angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE inhibitors, and angiotensin receptor blockers, or ARBs, are commonly used prescription medications. Names of ACE inhibitors typically end in pril, and some common examples are ramipril or perindopril. The name of ARBs typically end in sartan, such as candesartan or valsartan. The medication Entresto also contains valsartan, which is an ARB, as well as another drug called sucubitril. These medications are frequently used to treat conditions such as high blood pressure or hypertension, heart failure, or patients who have had a heart attack or stroke, or chronic kidney disease. What is the link between ACE inhibitors and ARBs and COVID-19? It has been demonstrated that the SARS-CoV-2 virus attaches to an enzyme called ACE2 in order to infect cells. This enzyme is expressed on many cells in the body. In animal models, ACE inhibitors and ARBs have been shown to increase the activity of ACE2. Therefore, the amount of ACE2 on cells could get higher and perhaps increase the risk of an infection with coronavirus. However, it is not clear whether this effect actually occurs in humans. It should be noted that ACE inhibitors do not block the ACE2 enzyme, only the ACE1 enzyme. There is also a theory that increased ACE2 activity could actually be protective in lung cells and reduce the risk of infection from the virus. Both of these views, however, are based on theoretical mechanisms at the molecular level. There is no evidence in humans to suggest that taking ACE inhibitors or ARBs increases or decreases the risk of infection from the SARS-CoV-2 virus. There is also a theory that taking ibuprofen increases ACE2 activity, and I would encourage you to watch the video in this series by my colleague, Dr. Dosen Chua, about the risk of ibuprofen with COVID-19. It has been observed that patients with high blood pressure or other types of cardiovascular diseases have more serious COVID-19 infections with a higher risk of dying. This has led people to wonder whether ACE inhibitors and ARBs may increase the risk of a more severe infection. This first came to my attention from an article in Bloomberg News published on March 9th about a doctor in Wuhan who noticed that a high number of patients who died of COVID-19 also had high blood pressure. This was followed up by a correspondence in the journal Lancet Report. Lancet Respiratory Medicine on March 11th, where the authors hypothesize that taking an ACE inhibitor or ARB may increase the risk of a serious infection. They state, notably, the most frequent comorbidities reported in these three studies of patients with COVID-19 are often treated with ACE inhibitors. It should be noted that this was not actually a scientific study, but rather a letter. It was just a theory posed by these authors. However, this prompted some patients and their doctors to stop ACE inhibitors and ARBs. On March 15th, the Canadian Society, 
Canadian Cardiovascular Society published a statement about COVID-19 and the use of ACE inhibitors in ARBs. This was written by a multidisciplinary group of cardiology specialists from across the country. They recommend that patients should continue to take their ACE inhibitors and ARBs unless otherwise advised by their physician. They updated this statement five days later on March 20th to also state that physicians should only stop ACE inhibitors and ARBs in patients with COVID-19 if there is an important reason to do so, such as very low blood pressure or kidney failure. More information about this statement is available on their website, which is ccs.ca. Other organizations have released position statements that all basically say the same thing. These include Hypertension Canada, Diabetes Canada, the Heart Failure Society of America, the American Heart Association, the American College of Cardiology, and the European Society of Cardiology. So what should we do with this information? There is currently no scientific evidence in humans to support that ACE inhibitors and ARBs increase the risk of getting COVID-19 or getting a more severe infection. However, this is a complicated scenario. Patients who are older are more likely to have high blood pressure, and we know that more severe infections can happen in older patients. Patients who have high blood pressure may also have other medical conditions, such as diabetes, heart disease, or lung disease, which may increase the risk of a more severe infection. The observation that patients with high blood pressure are at a higher risk of a more severe COVID-19 infection may simply be due to something called selection bias or confounding. This means that patients may be getting sicker due to their age or their health status, not the medications that they are taking. It's like saying that having gray hair is a risk factor for a more severe COVID-19 infection, except for the news is not telling people to rush out and dye their hair as a way to reduce their risk. Also, suddenly stopping ACE inhibitors or ARBs may have serious health consequences. For example, it may increase the risk of very high blood pressure in persons with hypertension, which can lead to stroke, or heart failure in persons with an impaired heart function, which can lead to water on the lungs or pulmonary edema. Both of these situations can cause people to be admitted to hospital, which is the exact opposite outcome that stopping these agents is trying to avoid. And finally, there are studies that are ongoing. On March 17th, two new studies were proposed by researchers at the University of Minnesota about using ARBs to actually treat patients with COVID-19 to reduce their risk of bad outcomes. And I've listed the numbers for you there for those that are interested. However, the results of these studies are not expected till April of next year. So based on the best available evidence, the bottom line is that there is no scientific evidence in humans to support that ACE inhibitors and ARBs increase the risk of getting COVID-19 or getting a more severe infection. Therefore, do not stop your ACE inhibitor or ARB unless you're told to do so by your physician or your nurse practitioner. There may be a reason to stop them in some people with severe illness who have shock or kidney failure, but that decision should only be made by the doctors in an intensive care setting. Notwithstanding, it is still important to stay informed about the latest information about COVID-19. Talk to your physician, nurse practitioner, or your pharmacist. Here are some references that I use to help inform this presentation. And the most up-to-date information about COVID-19 is available at the Canadian Public Health Agency or BC Centre for Disease Control websites. Thank you for listening. And remember to wash your hands, practice social distancing, and stay safe.